Hi, I'm Trey Ratcliffe. I want to show you one of my favorite features in Aurora HDR, layers. Why do I like layers so much? Well, first, it was one of the features that I always wanted in Photomatics, and now it's finally here in Aurora. Second, it allows you to do different effects to different parts of your photo, making the photo uniquely yours. Here, let me show you. Hello, awesome internet friend. How are you today? Uh, let's do a whole end-to-end -end demo kind of featuring layers, okay? So this is a RAW file, okay? I took this with my Sony a couple years ago. So I'm gonna take this and just drop it right into Aurora HDR 2018. I'm gonna have tone mapping on right here, all right? Remember, you can take in a series of bracketed photos. You can take in a single RAW photo, a set of RAW photos. I find that even just taking in a single RAW photo like this produces tremendous results. And here we are. You can see that if I hit the before and after, it's already done a little something something to it. That's because we checked that tone mapping. I will show you a few complex controls here too, but if you're a total beginner, don't forget, you can just use some of these presets that are down here, right? We have different kinds of preset categories um, for you to go choose different ones, all right? We'll go a little deeper here. I'm gonna show you how to use layers to make different parts of the photo look different ways. So that's that's where we're beginning. So let me hide the presets one. And I'll bring back um, all our power panels over here. Let's start with a crop. I don't really like the way I cropped it, so let's do that with the cropping tool right here. Uh, shrink it in here with the right, right. So I want to make it a little more squarish. By the way, what's going on in this photo? You might wonder. What's going on? This is in Guilin. These are these Chinese fishermen, and what they do. You see these birds? These are called coromont birds. They have a little ring around their neck, and they they attract the fish with the light, and then these birds dive in, grab the fish. Pull it out, they can't swallow it. They can't swallow the big ones because of the ring around their neck. Fishermen pull it out and they plop it in that little basket back there. Okay, so are we looking good? Let's, um, what I like to do on my base layer, which right here we're on the base layer, um, I like to make adjustments that I'll be happy with no matter what. Okay, so I'm gonna amp up my contrast a little bit. I'm gonna do a little bit of HDR enhance because I like the way that looks kind of everywhere. Um, a little smart tone to bring us some of the shadows. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Pretty good. Okay, that's good. Now let's go to the next layer. On the next layer, we're going to make the sky look even more HDR-ish, but also smooth it out. Okay, so I'm going to say add new adjustment layer. And here, you don't have to rename them. I will call it smooth sky. Okay, sky looks all right already, but I can see there's a little bit of noise up there. Um, let's go ahead and zoom into uh, 200% up there so you can see what I mean. See that? So the best way to control this area is to go to this area called HDR denoise. You can see as I pull this thing up, look how fast that is. Amazing, isn't it? Um, just as fast and smooth as those Instagram selfie girls. You know the ones I'm talking about. Um, so you can keep playing with these. You can make it like really smooth, especially with the boost. We don't need to make it look quite that smooth. That's pretty good. Okay, let's go back out to fit to screen. I still want the sky to look a little bit more, oh, I feel like that's too much now, uh, a little bit more HDR-ish. So I'm gonna go to this area, I'll do HDR enhance, bring that up a little bit. And I'm also gonna go to HDR structure and do some amount and some softness right there. All right, just give it some more texture. Then, now that's done to the whole thing, right? And this is where the layers come in. I just wanna brush it into the top area. So I'm gonna click my brush, okay? You can adjust how strong your brush is. I'm gonna put my brush at about 70% here. Make it a little bit bigger with the right bracket. And just kind of start painting up here. Okay, paint in the top part. Nice. So now we can kind of look at it before and after. So now this guy is smooth. Let's smooth it out even more, shall I? Let's do it. Smooth it out. Where did you go? Uh, HDR, do you know I said AR? Cool, that's looking nice. Now what I want to do is bring a little bit of uh, more glow and feeling around where the fisherman is, okay? And kind of brighten that up a little bit more, all right? So we're gonna make another layer, okay? And we'll call this uh, uh, fisherman glow. Great, great layer name, Trey. I just came up with that, believe it or not. Okay, so now we're gonna play with one of my other favorite areas, image radiance here, okay? You can see how this gives it that kind of glow, but it also darkens some of the shadows. 
it's one of our new sliders here called shadow so this will pull up that shadow area okay that looks really nice so now i'm going to click the brush right you can also press a b key and just start painting right around him okay look at that very nice so you can see with the mask like where i've painted right a little sloppy a little sloppy but that's okay um, now let's smooth out the water a little bit because the water is like a little bit jagged down there. Okay, let's smooth out the water. Okay, so now we hit a plus here, adjustment layer. I'll say smooth water. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the HDR denoise, and here I'll probably really do the boost here with the uh, with the HDR denoise, and it really smooths out that water. Okay, which looks nice. Okay, so now I'm just gonna paint in on top of that water. Okay. Nice. Sometimes rough water's nice. Sometimes smooth water's nice. Yeah, that's nice. Looking good. And um, this little eyeball again before uh, and after. You can see how much smoother the water is after I did that little that little move. And this is just where I painted. If you want to see. Okay. Cool. Um, let's do one final thing. I'll do kind of a, a final vignette once again to bring the center of attention to him. Okay. Uh, so we'll go down here all the way to vignettes. Um, oh, wrong way. If you go that way, it looks like you're getting a glamour shot in the mall. So don't go that direction. Okay. Like that scene from Napoleon Dynamite. Okay, so we're going to do this like this. We're going to make it a little bit smaller. And we're going to re-put the center. We'll put the center right on him. Okay. There we go. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. All right. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good for a fast little, see that didn't take long at all. Not long at all, let's go to before and after. So this is the before, this is right out of the camera. And then the after just has a lot more feeling and oomph. And um, yeah, I love it, I love it. Okay, let me end by showing you a few other before and afters. Uh, so just you can see the uh, versatility and flexibility of this tool. All right, here's some before and afters. This is from Tokyo. I made this one kind of bright and fun. Uh, this is a more subtle one that came from here in New Zealand, a little landscape action. A beautiful cathedral in Barcelona. Uh, it's beautiful Italy at night. Here's the street scene from Puerto Rico with a bit more life in it. This one, I amped up the colors in the hills a little bit. This one had some blowing lupins that were ghost corrected with Aurora. This is kind of a cartoony one from Osaka. Here's my hometown of Queenstown. And here's another one made with a single raw file.